I have a book haul today, and it's it's quite a bit of books. It is collective. It's been like months in the making since I have gotten all of these books. Um, and we also have library books. I'm gonna do a library book haul because I think that's a lot of fun. I am going to start with the books that I have thrifted. Nothing super crazy. I These, okay, let's start with these. Look how fun these are. They are Ascendance of a Bookworm. I'll do anything to become a librarian. Look at how cute. It's not exactly a graphic novel because there are like multiple pages of text, but there are pictures scattered throughout. And I just thought they looked so cute. I actually got these for, oh, there's like a little, looks like a poster inside. That's so funny. I got these from my local library. They have a cart that sits outside of their door uh, with free books on it. And so all of these were free. This is part one, apparently, in this series, these three books. I guess if I like them, I can try to find the rest, but I don't know. And then I thrifted books, oi, 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 oi. two, three, four, and five in the Game of Thrones series. These were at the thrift store for like, they had to have been at the most a dollar each. Um, someone unfortunately had picked up the first already and I guess the sixth and the seventh, I think there's seven. We'll have to just scout out the rest, which will be kind of fun because I mean, I don't think I'll be reading these anytime soon, but eventually sure, I would love to read these. Got time, you know, to find the rest of them. I think it'd be nice to have them all. This like mass market paperback is really fun. I like the size and they're like extremely floppy and super nice for giant mass part, mass market paperback, so I like. Next, I thrifted The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. I think that's how you say it, Michaelides, Michaelides, Michaelides. I have The Silent Patient by him, which I still have not read, even though I would like to. Um, I've heard that some people like this better than The Silent Patient, so kind of wondering which one I should read first. I don't know. This is set in a high society college and the Maidens are a secret society, which I love. I love reading books like that. So I think I will like this one. The last set of books that I thrifted is more just pretty <laughs> than anything. I mean, I might read them eventually if I feel like it, but it is Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's books. I don't know if this is all of them. It says complete and unabridged collector's library version. Like, look how cute. They're so little. They're like tiny little, little books and they have gold. All the edges are gold. I just thought they were so pretty and would look so pretty just like on a shelf. And they were super cheap. I have The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. And it says the cover illustration is a specially commissioned colored version of the original black and white illustration in the Strand magazine. Yeah. I just look how pretty it is. Like it's so pretty in the inside covers. Look how pretty it has a little ship imprint. Love. Okay, so we have The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Then we have The Return of Sherlock uh, The Return of Sherlock Holmes and His Last Bow. I wonder if this is the same with the cover. Yeah. This is the same with the cover. This one is much thicker than the first. Then we have the memoirs of Sherlock Holmes. Then 
Then we have The Casebook of Sherlock Holmes. The Hound of the Baskers, Baskervilles and The Valley of Fear. And then we have A Study in Scarlet and the Sign of the Four. I don't know. I liked them and they were super cheap, so I got them. And I'll probably read them one day. I'll at least read The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, some of the, the short stories, because why not, right? Now we'll move on to the library book portion. I have rediscovered my love for libraries and getting books from the library. Like, it's so nice and it's so convenient and it's so fun to just like walk in there and browse around and look around and yeah. I don't know, it's fun. Here in Norway, all of the libraries are connected. So if I go on the website and I'm like, oh, I want, you know, whatever, Check and Mate by Ali Hazelwood, then I can search it up on there and say that I want to check it out. Um, no matter where it is in Norway, it will be sent to my library where I can pick it up and read it. I'm wondering where I reserved the book Binti, Binti from the library. Um, Binti? I'm not sure how to pronounce it, I'm sorry. I reserved that book from the library a while ago and asked if it could be delivered to my library. And it is still on the way. So I'm wondering where it's coming from in Norway. I think it'd be really cool to find out like where it's coming from. I'll have to look into it, but that's kind of how it works. So if it's not at your specific library, you can say that you want it and they'll send it from any library in the whole country, which is crazy and awesome. So starting out, we have My Sister the Serial Killer. I have already started this one. I don't know how to pronounce the author's name and I refuse to butcher it. So this is about um, our main character's sister keeps murdering her boyfriends and the main character keeps cleaning up after her. And the back says, when blood is thicker and more difficult to get out of the carpet than water. I know a lot of people rave about this book and love this book and I saw it and I just, I wanted it. So it's a library book, so I picked it up. Next we have Five Survive by Holly Jackson. This is <laughs> the, I read the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series and loved it. And I think I'm just gonna like Five Survive as well. I'm actually super excited to read this one and I need to get to it soon. Cause I think it's almost about to go out, but we'll see. And then I have Stephen King, Misery. This one I have picked up because I've just seen everyone on booktube for some reason reading this book. I just recently read Holly by Stephen King. So I kind of want to get into his world, get into his universe, you know, see what it's all about. And I think people are, have said that this is actually a pretty good place to start. So that's where I'll start. Then we have Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson. This one is kind of the same. I saw it at the, at the library and I was like, yep, I've heard people talk about that. So I want to read it. The, there is no synopsis. The back is only blurbs and the inside doesn't have anything on it. So kind of going in blind, but I know people like it. So I know it'll be good. Then we have Tom Lake by Ann Patchett. Same thing, no synopsis on the back, no synopsis inside, um, but I have heard people talk about it and when I saw it at the library, I just picked it right up. Then we have In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune. This one I know is, it's like a fantasy-esque book, I believe. I've heard TJ Klune's books, they're well loved by a lot of people and that they're kind of like cozy fantasies and I'm super into that. So 
I want to see what he's about. And then we have Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. This is Maggie O'Farrell the same woman who wrote uh, the marriage portrait? She is. So Maggie O'Farrell wrote the marriage portrait, which I also have on my TBR. I did not realize that this was by the same woman. This cover is absolutely stunning. And this was the winner of the Women's Prize for Fiction in 2020. Same thing with this one. No synopsis on the back and nothing on the inside. So we'll see, but I know people love it. So that's why I picked it up. Then we have A Natural History of Dragons by Marie Brennan. This I have heard described as cozy fantasy and somewhere along the lines of Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. Like I said before, I love cozy fantasy. I love reading about cozy fantasy. And if this is that, then I want it. And then we have Normal People by Sally Rooney. I plan to do a, another YouTube video about giving Sally Rooney another chance because I did not like and DNF'd conversations with friends, but so many people love her. So I would like to give her a second chance and kind of see if I can get on board. And from what I understand, this one is most people's favorite. So hopefully I like this one. I also have um, Beautiful World, Where Are You? that I want to read. So kind of read both of those and see if I See if I like her or not, we'll see. And then lastly, I picked up The Raven Boys by Maggie Steifvader, Vader, Steifvader. I've just seen a lot of people talking about this series on, on the internet. I thought I wanted to pick it up, but another fantasy that a lot of people really like. So I thought I would give it a, sh a shot. And since it's a library book, there is no risk involved, which is so great. Now we'll move on to the books that I purchased myself. So starting out, we have Divine Rivals and Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. I am currently reading Ruthless Vows. I have finished Divine Rivals. I'm loving it. Loving this series so far. I think it is so good. And the second one, I think the second one is better. Hmm. Yeah. I think the second one is better. The, this is set in a fantasy world where gods rule and two of the gods are at war with each other. And our main characters, Iris and Roman, are war correspondents. So they are journalists. Bless you. So they are journalists who report what they see on the front lines. The first one definitely leaned more in the romance, to the romance side. I think that I like this one better because it, it has more of the fantasy elements in it. It kind of dives deeper into the fantasy that is talked about in the first book, which I'm liking a lot. Next, I have some translated Japanese fiction which I'm really excited to get to, and I wanna do a whole video on these as well. I have, of course, Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. Please correct me if I am wrong. This blew up everywhere. Um, I have heard that it will rip your heart out. It is extremely sad. I have heard that it is heartwarming. You know, all of the things. I believe this is about a coffee shop that like goes back in time or something. Yeah, the chance to travel back in time. Yep. So it is a, about a travel, a time traveling coffee shop, which I think will be so nice and fun. Next, I have Days at the Morisaki Bookshop. This is by Satoshi Yagisawa, and it's translated by Eric Ozawa. This, I just think it looks beautiful. Look at this cover has like blue foiling on it. It's so pretty. This one, I believe our main character lives above this bookshop. I believe the bookshop is owned by her uncle. That's really all I know about it, but it just looks super cute. So love. 
Then we have Heaven by Miko Kawakami. I saw this one in my bookstore and just thought that I wanted to pick it up because I wanted to I wanted to start the series on translated fiction and I already had these two and when I saw this one I was like oh yeah totally I'll pick that up for this because these are all really short so I think I'd be able to get through most I think I'd be able to get through all of these in one video for sure. This is translated by Sam Bett and David Boyd. This is about two teenage kids who become friends because they are both being relentlessly bullied and it's basically just about their friendship which I from what I can understand the last sentence says but what ultimately is the nature of a friendship when your shared bond is terror next I got the monk of mocha by Dave Eggers this is a non-fiction book about about Mokhtar. He wants to quit his job as a doorman and get into the and get into the coffee business. This dream leads him to Yemen, his ancestral home, the birthplace of coffee. While he's organizing farmers, refining roasting techniques, and collecting bean samples, civil war erupts across the country. The US Embassy closes its doors and Mokhtar is trapped behind enemy lines. Can he survive the Saudi bombs? and make it back to America with this precious suitcase of coffee intact. I just think that sounds so good. And it's about coffee and I absolutely love coffee. So I'm excited. Next we have Iris Kelly Doesn't Date. This just looks, they just look so fun. They're little sapphic romances. This is part of the Delilah Green standalone book series. My bookstore only had Iris Kelly Doesn't Date. They didn't have the other two, but I have seen that people really like this series. Even people who don't really love romance books really like this series, which is why I picked it up because I, I want the little romances for when I need the little romances after reading fantasy books or after reading super sad, you know, translated fiction. You know, I want the I want the little snack romances that I can read and come to when I just need a little break. And I'm hoping that this series can do that for me because they look so nice and so cute. Next, I have another nonfiction, I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. Of course, everyone was reading this book last year, I think it was, and loving it. Absolutely loving it. I've heard the audiobook is really good, but I'm so bad at listening to audiobooks and being able to retain that information. I've said that I want 2024 to be my year of nonfiction and really getting into that genre and memoirs, I think is going to be my way in. Speaking of nonfiction, I have another one called The Six by Lauren Grush. This is the untold story of America's first women astronauts. This just looks so cool. Look how good this looks. The little silhouettes on the front. It has pictures in the middle, which is so nice. I love space stuff and I love women, so this can only be fitting. We have The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. I've just been wanting to read this for a while and I saw this cover at the bookstore and I really, really liked it, so picked it up. Then we have Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. This is the book Netflix came out with a movie based on this book and I liked the movie so I wanted to also pick up the book. Then we have Vicious by V.E. Schwab. This, I loved The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and I've heard people really like this series by her so I wanted to pick up the first one to see if, you know, I'm into it. Then we have Every Heart a Doorway by Shauna McGuire. I picked this one up mainly because Books in La La loves this series and they're really short. And I thought that that was intriguing and they look really pretty on the covers. I believe they are about, it is about a school <coughs> with children and the children like go to these like interesting worlds and stuff. I think I'm really gonna like it. Next I have Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Mayer. I have mixed feelings about this one now because I bought it when everyone was blowing up about this book and absolutely raving about this book. But since then, I have only heard negative things about it. So kind of conflicted about it now. Will I still read it? Yeah. 
I want to know where I stand when it comes to this book. So, but yeah, less excited than I was. Then we have Powerless by Lauren Roberts, another one that blew up blew up on the internet. This is her debut novel and people have described it as Hunger Games-esque romanticy vibes. I want to just see what the hype is about. That's it. I just want to see what people think about it and what I think about it and I'm excited. I want to read this one like pretty bad actually. Then we have Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. Look how pretty this cover is. It has like red foiling on the front. Again, Cozy fantasy, cozy fantasy. That's all I need to hear. And then I'll give you my wallet. Next we have the Shepherd's King duology, One Dark Window and Two Twisted Crowns. I can't remember if I talked about this in a video already, but just in case I haven't, I have these two books and same, absolutely blew up on the internet. I wanna see what the hype is about. I do. And then last but certainly not least because I have recently found out that this is the highest rated book that I have on my shelf. So, and that is The Will of the Many by James Islington. <laughs> I am immensely excited to get to this book and I wanna do a video of reading the highest rated book on my shelf and the lowest rated book on my shelf. That's how I found out that this was the highest rated book on my shelf, so. I'm excited to get to this one. It is a chunky one, that is for sure. That is all of the books that I have. Quite a lot, quite a lot to read. And it is safe to say I will not be buying books for a little while after this. I have plenty to read now, so bye.